In this video, we're going to see an example of how we can create a card class that will allow us to do things like creating an array of cards or anything else where we would want to save the cards and use them as objects. So in our previous example, we had a for loop that just generated random numbers and then used those random numbers to figure out what card to print out. Really, the only thing we could do was print out the card. Here, we'll actually be able to save those cards as we create them because we're going to be instantiating card objects. So our approach is we're going to create a card class. We're going to have arrays to keep track of the rank and suit values. And this will allow us to extend this class for different types of cards in the future. So just like before, we'll have an array of link 13 for the rank values and of one to four for the suit values. Those will both hold strengths. The default constructor will generate a random value and then use that random value to get something out of the array. We'll have a two string method and then we'll think about our accessors and mutators. Definitely we want accessors for the rank and suits. Mutators though are a little bit more interesting of a question. And I think for this class, we're not gonna want mutators because think about if you have a playing card in the real world. Well, if you're playing a game, especially one for money, and you try to change what that card is, it could have negative consequences for you. So I think actually we're gonna not have mutators. We're just gonna have accessors. So we'll create some getter met methods for the rank and suit, and we'll just leave the mutators out. That'll give us a class where once you instantiate that card, you can't change it from there. And we may also add another constructor to allow you to choose what exact card you want to create. That'll allow this card to be class to be used in, for example, a deck class or something like that. It just gives you a little bit of flexibility going forward. So let's see how we write this class. So here's our old class where we just had a loop and we're going to create a new card class. So we have a card class and I think we want to take these same arrays since the values are going to be the same but I'm not going to make these final because there's not really a good reason to prevent these arrays from being changed if the class is extended. So if you, for example, wanted to create a deck of Uno cards, you could certainly extend this class and then update these particular arrays to suit your purposes there. So we're going to need two data members and we'll make both of those private, one for the rank, one for the suit. And then now we can let Eclipse do some of the work for us at this point. So if we click on source and then generate constructors using fields, let's create an empty constructor. And actually let's go ahead and create one that allows you to pass in an integer or integers, I should say for the rank in the suit. And you'll notice that when Eclipse generates a constructor for you, it calls the superclass constructor by default. That's fine. We can leave that there. In this case, it's the object class, so probably those defaults are correct, but it's always good practice to do that, even if you don't need it, because then you're in the habit of doing it in those cases where you do. If they don't pass in these integers, we're going to want to do a random number generator. So I'll do that here. And it's going to want it to import that. So say this rank is equal to random next int. And then we could say 13 here, but remember, we may overload these later. So instead of actually giving it the size, we can get the size from the array. So we'll say ranks dot length. Now we don't want it to ever be zero. So we're going to add one here, but notice we have a zero index there. So actually we're going to take one off the length because that'll give us one, two, three, four in this case, and then we'll add one. So one potential issue you could run into here is if this particular way did never allows us to get to this zero element. So I actually think I'm going to go ahead and, and remove this in this case, and then just do a standard ranks length minus one. And then it'll just be up to the person calling this class to understand what this is. These are public. So the programmer would have access to those to see them if they wanted. And so then we're going to do a similar thing that we did for rank for the suit. And so now our card is created. So for our getters and setters, or our accessors and mutators, remember we don't want to have a mutator, but we'll generate these and say we don't want to set suit and set rank, and we don't want to have setters for ranks and suits necessarily, at least in this default implementation. Again, if we wanted to extend this and create a child class that lets you change that, that would be fine. So we just have the getters here. We don't want the client to actually change the class. So now let's add a two string. And that's not going to be at all what we really want, but it gives us a nice bit of starter code to work with. So I think what we want to do is return rank, and our index is going to be our rank data member. And then we'll say of 
suits suit, which is our index into the suit array, and that should work nicely. So again, not a whole lot in this class. We have the same array we had before. We have a rank and a suit member, and then we have two constructors. The default constructor gives us a random card, and we have this other constructor that allows the client to specify which card they want created. And we should probably do some error checking here to make sure that rank and suit are valid indices into that array. But for now, we'll, we'll skip that part. So let's create a driver class to test out our card class. So we'll have some number of cards. And if you'll remember, our original requirements was five random cards. I'm going to create an array of cards. And then I'm going to have, I think I wanted to call this Java practice. And that should clear that up. Very good. And this needs to be an array. And that looks good. So we have an array of cards. Now let's fill it. So we'll say cards ii is equal to new card. And we'll just use the default constructor, which gives us a random card. Now we could at this point print the card. And then our code actually acts a lot like what we had before. And this should not be count. This should be num cards. However, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a second for loop that'll print out the cards. If you'll remember back in our original implementation, we have this for loop. Once we're at this point of the code, there's nothing else we can do with those cards. They're gone. We generated random numbers, figured out what the card was, printed it out. That's it. Here, I've generated my cards, and then I print them out separately. Now, again, it's more efficient to just generate them and print them at the same time. But what I'm trying to show here is that I could now have used this array of cards as part of some game or something else. This gives me a lot more flexibility creating these card objects. So let's run this and see how it works. And we have an exception array out of bounds. So we got index four for length four. Ah, I tried to keep too much of the logic from before. Remember, this gives us an index from zero up until this number, but not inclusive of this number. For the suits, this would give us a number from zero to three, then we add one, because if you remember before, we had that zero element. So I'm going to take that off because, again, I've decided I don't want to have that zero option there. And so now when I run this, I should get my cards. Now, if you'll remember, our output here, we said card one and so forth. So why don't we go ahead and do that here as well? There's no reason we can't say card ii plus one, again, in parentheses, because we want it to do that arithmetic before it does the string append. And then we'll put a semicolon and a space. So here's what our output looked like from our first version. Here's what our output looks like from the second version. And that looks just the same. Again, though, now we have a much more flexible code. It's also a little simpler using this card class that we've created than it was with the previous version. Again, here we have this card class that we can create objects of and use them. And this thing will do what cards do. So we didn't test our getters and setters, but those are pretty straightforward. And I think this is a good start for a card class. Obviously, you could add more flexibility. One thing you might want to do is add some capability of allowing a constructor that gives you a string and then stores them as that string. That's possible as well. But for now, I think this meets the requirements that we had. And so we'll leave this as is. So that is an example of how to create a card class in Java.